Oh, this is going to be a different job from everything I've done before. This shower, this house was built in, I believe the homeowner said 1968, somewhere around that time frame. I'm north of Georgia, just south of Tennessee. Um, so um, apparently there's, even though it was built a long time ago, apparently there was never any type of um, floated wall going on. Uh, so they have the original sheetrock here. There's no wire lay that I would expect from the 1960s going forward. But there are some things that tell me definitely that this is built back in the day. This is the first indication here. We're not doing these anymore. Um, the hot and cold side. And we're definitely not doing um, iron pipe. So, but there's a lot of things going on here that are kind of throwing me for a bit of a loop. And I'm going to get to that shortly. Um, there was a lot of rot damage and stuff. The homeowner apparently did a tear out. He told me that um, there was a builder's grade tile on here at one point. And I, I don't know that they did a renovation on here. I'm assuming they did because there are some things that he told me that just kind of tell me that things were done at some point differently later on um, but he did say there was a lead pan he didn't say a lead pan I did because he said it was real heavy etc etc and obviously there's a lot of wood rot this is going back from you know the day it was built uh, so it took a long time to get to that point um, there are some other kind of anomalies going on because we have soft copper and that is very unusual we're not doing that anymore um, as I already mentioned this valve and the steel pipe we're not doing either but why they would um that, i don't know there are a lot of questions that sometimes remain unanswered i just kind of think to myself out loud um, this is literally this is not galvanized um, this is a steel pipe which is very odd um, haven't seen this ever in a shower in a bathroom at all and this is in my best judgment the stack the stack would be for the shower and or the toilet and or the sink so all that stuff is up under the slab oh by the way this slab construction of course so all all of that plumbing runs down to this direction ties into the toilet with the Y at some point ties into this drain at some point and then goes into the stack up to the roof for positive airflow but uh, the odd thing is there is a steel drain so there was never really a flange. Um, obviously there was something here, some type of flange makeup before, but that's long since gone because the homeowner threw it away. But he did say the old drain, which is here. And that's a steel drain as well. So we have a steel pipe and a steel drain um, with a stack um, without a flange. Oddly enough, the newer drain, which I'm gonna put in, and these plastic drains, I can't, so when I said we have a, a bit of an anomaly, something I'm not run into is a straight drain coming up. And I know they did things a lot different back in the day, because I've been on many of those jobs before, but nothing like this before, ever, ever, ever. Um, I don't even know about the liner, like I don't know that there was any type of, um, like I said, there was a, some type of pan in here for sure, but um, I don't know because I wasn't here to take it out. Oddly enough, the threads on here work on this drain. So there's a lot of different ways to go about, see, perfect fit. But I don't like that drain because it's cheesy. They don't have the screws. It's just kind of a pop-off type of cap. So anyway, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, so to speak. This is not going to be part of the makeup because I cannot retrofit it. Um, even if I cut out, even if I knocked out all this concrete down, whatever it is, six inches or whatever, did a square cut around here, took out all the dirt, I still have to cut through that steel. And then I have to somehow put a boot or some, something on here. I'm not sure quite how it would work, but it's a lot of work uh, to get that done. And so what we've decided on with all, all the many, many ways that we can retrofit things, what we've decided on is not to have a pan layer. So what we're going to do 
And again, um, for those of you out there that uh, have followed me, you know, or I've mentioned it anyway, you must know that I always go by um, what my customer, I, I give choices out and my customer ultimately decides. And so there's probably a three or four different choices. Uh, one I already mentioned about cutting this out and um, kind of retrofitting stuff. And then the other choice that we decided on, RedGuard is a uh, waterproofer, but it's also uh, custom building products allows it to be a pan liner. And I've always been kind of tenuous about actually using RedGuard as a pan liner. I just feel like um, I trust it. I definitely trust it. And I use two coats on a wall and three coats in the corner and all that stuff. And I've painted cardboard box and I painted sheetrock with it and had water sitting in it for a week and no water comes out. So I'm comfortable with it. I just don't have an application. People have asked me on my channel, why don't why don't you just use RedGuard as a pan liner? Because there's no reason to. There's a reason for everything. Um, the other um, option that I gave was using Schluter because I can put Schluter cloth down here, glue it to the floor, and use that as a pan liner. And I've done that before on a couple of applications. So there's an option there too. And then, of course, I would RedGuard over that because I don't trust the seam. They're using mortar for a seam. I just don't trust that. So that's an option too. But in the at the end of the day, we decided, or my customer decided, that we're going to do red guard. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to prep this floor. I'm going to I'm going to get all the dust off and everything, and and put in my scabbing, my two by six scabbing all the way around because using red guard as a pan liner um, makes me have to use um, all this board as part of the pan liner. I need something to paint against it. So all these 2x4s and 2x6s I'll scab in will be part of that pan liner by virtue of the whole thing being, yeah, red guard. Four coats I'm going to put on, um, including over the curb. So that will be one contiguous um, waterproof sealer where my mortar bed will be able to go onto that. And then because, as I do with all my showers, I waterproof everything when the prep is done then the top of that mortar bit will also be red guarded so I have no compunction about it I don't anticipate water ever getting into the mortar bed let alone the floor itself so I don't have a problem with that a couple things I am going to do though I am going to fill in this gap and when I figure out where my drain is going to stop I'm actually going to put some um, either plumber's putty I haven't decided yet um, I might put some silicone, a bead of silicone right down here, um, just in case, just in case, yeah. And then of course I'll put the silicone around the edge of here once the mortar is poured um, to keep water ever from getting in the pan. And that's how I'm going to go forward. Um, then I have to retrofit all this soft copper too, so this will be interesting. And I'm going to take out this framing and all this sheetrock that was going to, all this is going to go away also so we're going to have one big open shower as opposed to it's kind of closed off right now so i'm going to get started on taking out all of this wood all of the sheetrock open this up put a curb in put the um, put the two by sixes in there scab those in and um yeah get started on the red guard um i'm going to wait probably an, a good part of an hour between coats but eventually I'll have four coats in there and we should be good to go. It'll be interesting. All right, so I'm about four hours later. I have taken everything out that I needed to take out and I have started the rebuild process. So, a little bit unconventional. Well, no, it's a lot unconventional. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do with what you got. And so for that reason, as I said, I filled in I filled in all between all my studs with um, blocking. Even notched out over here, I was really kind of freaking out because I barely have like half an inch. Um, and I was going to put some plywood there, but I was able to notch out pretty good. And uh, I spread thin set on all of my wood. I just feel like um, the red guard will stick better. Plus, I need something kind of contiguous. I don't need to fill in all those cracks between the studs and the blocking and all that stuff with uh, red guard. 
I would rather have something a little girthier of a thin set. So that's what I've done all the way around, including the inside of the curb and the outside of the curb and um, at the bottom of the drain. I wasn't able to get one of the nice drains in there. Um, it wouldn't thread, but maybe one and a half times. I wasn't comfortable with that. Plus, um, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It wasn't setting level on um, both left and, or yeah, left and right and front and back. This one sets a lot more level. I don't like it, but I can get probably, I don't know, about this much bite into, um, into the thread. So I'm more comfortable with that than I am the other one, but I like the other one better. And then I just screeded out my thin set at the bottom of the drain, right up to the neck, right up to the barrel of the drain. Tomorrow I'll put some caulking in there before I rig guard everything. And yeah, I think this is uh, going to turn out well. I'm going to rethink a couple of things. I happen to have some Schluter. Um, not a whole lot, but I have enough to, uh, if I'm not, mm, I don't know. As I said, I'm kind of hoofing this, but I might uh, go ahead and put the Schluter up against the wood and onto the floor. I'm not really sure yet. Not sure. I'm going to give that some thought tomorrow. But yeah, um, that's what I'm dealing with. And so I can start, after I start doing this, I can put some backer board up. Well, i got to do some plumbing to, first, but that's what we're dealing with. So it's looking like a shower again. What I decided to do, kind of impromptu type of waterproofing. I had some extra sluter, so I had the inside probably coming out about four inches all the way around, all the way up to the top of the blocking, and wrapped around the curb, mostly around the curb. I just feel like that's better. I'm comfortable with putting red guard on the wood. I've done it before. I still believe it's waterproof. This just makes me feel a little better. And um, then I'm going to put at least three coats of red guard in this entire thing before I ever put wallboard in. And then, of course, I'll put the wallboard in, waterproof that. I think this will be 100% waterproof. I'm caulking up under the neck of the drain. So, yeah. And they'll be caulking around the top of the drain as well after the mortar is put in. So, yeah. Very, very comfortable with this... Um, this job the way it's going so far. Haven't done it before. Probably will never do it again. But it, it's interesting. Only because of that did I have to make all this stuff up. Well, this is the final result. Of course, I excluded some of the steps because the steps are redundant. It's what I do on every shower, regardless if I had a pan line or not. But um, yeah, after the mortar got poured, a couple days goes by, and then I do a little patchwork. I've mentioned on many, many videos how I scree out some thin set around the drain because the red guard tends to stick to it better little dips that are going on and then up against the pan liner in this case the Schluter which is my pan liner around the edge um, same reason red guard sticks to that thin set better than uh, the mortar and that's about it everything else remains the same I still have my gap going up underneath all the way around so the tile slides up under there no way water can wick up to my wallboard and then my wall tile goes on top of that after it's been grouted. So there's really no difference and that's why I didn't really show the process because except for the conundrum that I faced at the very beginning, everything else being equal is all the same. And it is definitely 
definitely waterproof. Three coats of Red Guard on the bottom, three coats on the top, um, two coats on the walls, and ready to set tile. Uh, for those of you wondering about the ledger boards, if you haven't seen my channel before, I used ledger boards for my first row of tile. This is my last row. First row, last row. So the first row goes up first, and you can, if you have time all, all the way to the ceiling, um, the ledger board gets screwed into the wall. A little bead of, little dab of silicone goes into those screw holes after those are pulled off tomorrow. And then, yeah, that... This is all level, all the way around, it's all level. So that board is level. That board is level. That board is level. And the way you do that, once you have your first board up like this, then you can just bring your level all the way down to the end, hit that first screw there, and then you can level out from that point the rest of your board. So you're flush on your level with the board. Flush on the level with your board. And um, yeah, that's how it works out. You can double check with a larger level. Going like at a diagonal from here all the way across. I can't do it on the other side because I don't have enough room to door jam. And that's basically uh, that's basically the process. Well, that is a process, not basically. It's exactly the process I go through on every shower, except for, like I said, the first part. And then the rest of it is just slinging tile up the walls. Before the end of the day, I'll do the floor pan with this tile. Um, that will get grouted tomorrow, first thing. A couple hours of dry time will allow me, if I have any other tile to set, do that. And if I don't have any other tile, then I can grout this whole thing. And that's kind of the, the end of the discussion for what I made the video for. And it's a week later. Yeah, this shower is watertight. I have no issues with it whatsoever. Even though I had to improvise, sometimes you gotta do that. But yeah, um, a week to get this shower back to a shower. Looking good, if I don't say so myself. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, Please donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.